So if you've watched the first overview of cellular respiration, um, we've gone through the first four stages of oxidation of glucose. We've got glycolysis, conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, and citric acid cycle. And we've seen how in these first three stages, we are oxidizing glucose to the point where the carbons are fully oxidized and we release CO2 as a waste product because there's no usable energy left in those carbon bonds. In the process, we've created these high energy molecules such as NADH, ATPs, and FADH2. If we take this now and we bring in our electron transport chain, we are reminded how these high energy electron transporters such as NADH and FADH2 are used to ultimately make ATP. NADH drops off its electrons at complex number one, um, and FADH2 drops off its electrons at complex number two. And as these guys are dropping them off, uh, these electrons are being used by complex one to pump four hydrogens across from the membrane from low to high. Then those electrons are shuttled over to complex three where four more hydrogens are pumped from low to high creating a gradient. And then finally complex four pumps two more hydrogens across. And this creates a gradient of high protons on one side of the membrane and low on the other. And that gradient is used as hydrogen ion protons flow through the ATP synthase that powers the energy required to make ADP and convert it into ATP. FADH2, which has slightly lower energy electrons, cannot drop off its electrons at complex one, so it drops them off at complex two, and therefore FADH only pumps six hydrogen ions across as those electrons move through complex three and complex four, but not complex one. So basically you have NADH pumping 10 hydrogens across, FADH2 pumping six hydrogens across, which is ultimately why NADH makes more ATP because you create a larger part of that gradient by pumping more hydrogens, ultimately because it started with higher energy electrons. Now, what I really want to focus on here from the rest, for the rest of this time is the role of oxygen. As those electrons are transported from complex one to complex three, complex four, they have to have a place to go. So these electrons that are very low energy at the end need to be dropped off. And oxygen is the final electron acceptor of those low energy electrons. If we are in a situation where we have no oxygen, then these electrons have nowhere to go and all the electrons behind start to back up because they cannot be passed forward. If that's the case, then the electron transport chain stops, meaning hydrogen protons can no longer be pumped, meaning there is no longer a gradient, and if there's no longer a gradient, we are no longer making ATP by oxidative phosphorylation. But the problem even goes further than that. If the electron transport chain is backed up, then NADH can no longer drop off its electrons. And if NADH no longer drops off its electrons, we no longer are regenerating any NAD. And if you recall, any time we have NADH being made, this required two NAD as input molecules. Those NAD input molecules had to come from the restoration of NADH to NAD as it dropped off its electrons. So since every one of these processes require NAD plus as an input, then this whole system backs up and none of these can occur in the absence of NAD plus. So in summary, with the lack of oxygen, the electron transport chain backs up, oxidative phosphorylation can't occur, ultimately NADH cannot drop off its electrons, and so there is no NAD plus remaining, and then all of these other systems, glycolysis, conversion to pyruvate, and the citric acid cycle also cannot occur. So in the absence of oxygen, basically we are no longer able to make ATP, and that's why we die relatively quickly if we don't have oxygen. Now our bodies do have one little trick up their sleeve to continue making at least some ATP in the absence of oxygen. And this is called anaerobic respiration. And in anaerobic respiration, the body takes the two pyruvate that are made during glycolysis and converts them to lactic acid. This process is actually a reduction 
reaction. And so the reduction reaction takes two NADH and oxidizes them back to NAD+. And now that we've restored two NAD+, we have the molecule that the body was lacking to at least keep glycolysis going. So by converting the 2-pyruvate to lactic acid, um, this process is able to continue on, and therefore we are able to make 2 ATP per glucose. However, this is a problem because that 2 ATP per glucose is compared to about 34 that we get with aerobic respiration, and so our body cannot do this very long. Um, it will not get the energy that it needs. So lactic acid buildup is a problem. Our body only does this reaction in order to restore some NAD+, so that it can continue glycolysis and make a little bit of ATP. But in addition to lactic acid being a little bit toxic, the big problem, then the reason we die quickly after holding our breath, is that the ATP is not enough to keep our cells alive by itself.